Rich, as I mentioned, it's three goals in a row for the first time for him since the run of four in the lockdown days of February, March 2021. Whilst we're on the subject of players and where they are, Russ Richarlison, where are you with him? Is he almost now caught himself out of a move in January? I mean, I know many would say, look, he needs to have a run of games anyway. But, um, I mean, he's on a bit of a run now. Is it down to luck? Is it down to the fact that he's had this surgery? What do you put it down yeah, to this change of form? <clears throat> yes, he had um, a hip problem, uh, I think it was. And, uh, I mean, Sonny in the week, obviously the manager, all said that he was moving so much more freely, you know, in training and in games. And and you could see that he was happier until he went off, of course. He's kind of hobbling off, wasn't he? So hopefully he'll be okay. And I think that the problems he had off the pitch, as well as that, even when he was playing, affected his confidence and up there. And uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant to see Brazil's number nine playing for Spurs and scoring so many goals recently. And long may it continue. I think realistically, the only place he was going to go was nowhere else in the Premier League, maybe Saudi Arabia, maybe continental Europe. But, you know, we need somebody in front of goal who's confident and he is the man at the moment. So I'm quite happy to press ahead with Richarlison personally, but other people may have a different idea. For Sonny now, it is 114 Premier League goals. Short corner results in Poro Planning Johnson, who thwarted by Pickford, but Son lashed home the rebound for his 11th Premier League goal of the season. It betters his tally from the 22-23 season. And you know what, CJ? He just looks like he's absolutely loving his football at the moment, doesn't he? Doesn't he, Sonny? He just looks like a completely reborn player in a Spurs shirt with Ange, obviously, of course, at the helm. Yes, and the armband. You know, um, totally, totally. He's, he's, he's just, he's just such a. I mean, listen, I, I don't know what's happened today. It's turned into a bit of a sort of man gushing session about other men. But you know, listen, I'm, I'm never going to hold back on my adoration of, of Sonny. He was my favourite player the moment he arrived at the club. I've said this dozens of times on on your show, so I won't go into it anymore. But I mean, something that you always get out of Sonny, even when he doesn't have a brilliant game, is his work rate. Um, you know, he's so committed. He chases everything what's down. What's really important as well. As one gets older, especially if you want to compete athletically, is flexibility. So you don't really, you know, even if you do lose a yard, you don't lose that ability, that rangy ability that Sam was talking about when we were talking about Saar. He has this exceptional gait. You know, he manages to take a step. He's almost like a triple jumper. You know, in, in one step, he's, he's he's covered about five or six metres. Um, pretty extraordinary. And, and, and Sonny has all of that. And that's really important as well that uh, as a captain, that you show that the, the number one thing that you can always control every single game. I was talking about this to my nephew recently, um, Matteo, who lives over in Australia. And hello to our Australian uh, watchers and listeners. Is that, um, yes, you can work on your passing, you can work on your shooting, you can work on your tackling, you can work on positioning and all that kind of thing. But the one thing that you control every single time that you step out onto the football pitch is your mentality your effort. That's just a decision that you make. It's got nothing to do with, with your physical attributes. And you always get that from Sonny and God love him for it. And I was delighted that he scored um, again today. Sam, just bringing you in on Sonny, if I can, you know, now he's scored and assisted 15 goals so far in the Premier League this season. Only Harlan yeah. and Mohamed Salah, both 18 have more. Only Oli Watkins have as many. And as we read Sonny's stats here for the season, eight of, well, now we look at the matches played, obviously 18, 19, 11 goals scored, four assists, 15 goal contributions. Amazing. Just how good has he been, Sam, for you this season, Sonny, and the return since Ange has been at the helm? And of course, as um, Russ and obviously TJ alluded to, obviously getting that captaincy. The captaincy has been key. It's been, it's been key for him. Uh, you know, the the step up from Kane's departure, I think, to Bayern has, has nothing but strengthened Tottenham in that way. However, I must admit, you know, he's playing well... I, and he's making mistakes. He is making mistakes. He's overrunning the ball quite a bit too far. He's reading the passes a little bit too far ahead. And that brings in Johnson as well this evening a couple of times because he's just not ready. The one thing I will say is he's, you know, he's amazing. I fully back him. I think he should be there. But some of these intelligent balls where he's just, and, and you know, there was a time where I think that there was an incredible cross. I think it was Kulu that put it in that Johnson should have got his nut straight on it and Richie would have 100% done it and he didn't jump. He was grounded for the whole um, procedure. Um, but um, but Sonny, he's, he's, when he has a good game, he has a good game. 
And he scored today, so we give him the credit in the fight. And I think what TJ just said there, I'm probably going to say this every time you switch me over from TJ, from what he's saying, I agree with absolutely everything. But I think what as a captaincy, you need to see a leader. Uh, if you've been given the captaincy, you need to lead your squad. You need to drive it. It's management in its own right, OK? You're the manager on the pitch when you've got the manager off the pitch. And that's you need to influence with effort and passion. That's what you need to do. Um and I think he does that in abundance. I've got to, I've got to be honest. I, I, I don't see. He, he's not one of these captains where you put them at, at fullback and you see this leader in terms of strength and desire when the two one down that are giving the players the, the you know the fight. He's this player that leads with effort, and and um, mm. it's you can see it. You, you can clearly see it, and I think that's made yeah. a huge influence to Huming Son. He is quite easily, I'll say, it every single time he would walk into any team in the footballing yeah. world. He would walk into any squad in the world. Uh, no problem at all. He's invaluable. Um, what I have to say is just going back to Richarlson and you mentioned his name in the same sentence as transfer. And, you know, I'm always honest on this show, Rick. If he was transferred, that would piss me off because um, he is he's, the, the effort that I think the managers put into him to revive him, especially through his dark times. And by the way, he's been very open about his own dark times within the, you know, within the club, hasn't he? He's been really quite forthcoming with putting that public. Um, I, I admire somebody for that, I, I must admit. Um, you know, it's the same as um, football is a business now. It is one, it's the most televised thing in the world. And so it's become a show. Even though we want the results, it's become a, a show. And I think getting to know these players and the personalities is a part of it that's going to become much more of it in the future. And I think that's probably why, going back to what we were saying about Sean Dice, was that we, we love seeing these type of people that are real because we don't like fake people, right? We don't like we don't like the one word answers. We don't like we try better next time. We don't like oh it didn't fall our way. We like people that just talk openly. That's yep. what the world's into these days, honesty. Right. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so that's why we're falling in love with these particular characters in, in the footballing world. That's my opinion. And I think with Richarlson, as, I mean, actually, take the Deli Alley uh, circumstances, for example, with his, his recent uh, confessions of, um, you know, his previous um, happenings, let's say. Um, didn't the world fall in the footballing world fall in love with Deli Alley that thought he was a stubborn MF? who, you know, who just stuck up his own backside and whatever. When he released yeah. that documentary, when he released that recording, um, then we we love it. And I think that's a big part of football these days, other than just what's going on on the pitch. So, um, yeah, in answer to your question, which is a long way around it, Rick, Huming's son is loved by the footballing world, but what he brings is so much more than that. 